In the beginning, there was nothing. And then, bang, AEL was born. Astro's Electronics Lab brings you entertaining, sometimes silly videos relating to electronics for your enjoyment. Follow along with his frustrations and antics and maybe learn something in the process. Greetings, the Astro 30 here, yet again with a, another short video for you. Basically a how-to video. Now, we're looking at a, another one of those AEL 480, ETI 480 power amplifier clones that I've built. This is a second module I've built. I just recently got all the components that I needed to complete this yesterday. So what I'm going to go and do today is I'm going to go through a quick guide of how you test an unknown power amplifier after you've either built it or you've repaired it. So you don't go blowing up expensive stuff like test equipment and, well, the amplifier itself. So the first rule is never run a power amplifier without its heatsink. Uh, at the moment it's not actually attached to a heatsink. I am going to attach it to a heatsink. I have to find two 3 amp fuses to put in there. I might just steal them out of the um, other amplifier module because I haven't got them at the moment. However, that's not really necessary for testing this amplifier. So, first, we want to do a power on test. So, the easiest way to do that is if you've got a module like this, like you've just built a, a kit, if you've got access to a variable lab supply, you can slowly bring the voltage up uh, whilst watching the current, and if the voltage stops increasing, uh, but the current starts increasing, then there is a fault. So you then switch it off and then see what you've done. So what you should really do before powering up any amplifier that you've built or repaired is just go over your work and make sure that you haven't got any solder bridges between components and stuff like that. Just to, you know, it's like a sanity check. If you don't have access to a variable lab supply, or one that can power this amplifier successfully in the first place, well, you can get away with using the main power supply and put through uh, both a dim bulb tester, as well as putting 100 ohm half watt resistors across each fuse holder, if it has fuses. If it doesn't have fuses, you can still put 100 ohm resistors in series with each power rail. And what that will do is when you first power it on, if it's drawing too much current, the resistors will fry, go open and go away. And with the dim bulb also, you'll be able to see whether or not you've got a shorted output stage. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to a heatsink and a suitable power supply and a dim bulb, and we'll just go through the process together. Okay, so I've got everything um, hooked up, the power supply, the transformer, etc. But I'm going to do another sanity check before I power it up. And I've just got it uh, vice gripped to a heatsink. I'm going to check that the collectors of each of these output transistors are isolated from the bracket, because there's nothing worse than two of these transistors being shorted together. Even though the collectors of this particular amplifier form the output, so it wouldn't really matter. But just to double check, see, I've got no continuity on any of these collectors. Um, so that's perfectly isolated from the heatsink. Alright, and also now as you can see, I've got two 5 watt resistors across each of these two fuse holders. Uh, 5 watts a little bit high, it really should be half watt for safety resistors, but this is fine because I'm using a current limited dim bulb anyway. And these two output transistors here I did buy off of Evil Bay, um, so I'm a bit dubious as to whether or not they're going to work. But, yeah, you never know. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a multimeter in voltage DC across the output and ground just to monitor what's going on the output and this will be the last video during the Easter break because I'm going to have a break over Easter and do practically nothing so I deserve a 
well five day break I think um, from everything. So I plugged this into the dim bulb which is connected to our transformer and I'll turn the dim bulb on. Yep, it's 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 good. There's no excessive current draw there. And compared to what the other module measured, there's about 21 millivolt DC on the output, which is perfectly fine. Anything below 50 is considered okay or average. Less than that would be better, but that's just because of the design of the input stage. It's probably not balanced correctly. So it could be greatly improved. However, we do not want to see a DC offset any higher than 60 millivolts or else there is a good chance there is a problem. So now that we know that the output is fine for all intents and purposes, I'm now going to measure the voltage drop across one of these resistors. Doesn't matter which one. Because I want to bias the output stage now because this amplifier has an adjustable bias by this pot. Uh, I'll put a link in the description and up top here to building this amp. I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of what I did when building it uh, because, well, I've already done it. So I want a current draw or quiescent current on the output of roughly 35 MA. So across a 100 ohm resistor that should be a voltage drop of 3.5 volt. So I will start increasing this pot and see that the voltage is increasing it may take a while we're at one volt now getting close Whoa. Whoa, a little bit too high bring it back down I'm going to say roughly there is good enough so we just do a quick heat test Nothing's getting hot there. The resistors are not getting hot. Zobel network is not getting hot. Drivers are not getting hot. The VAS is getting slightly warm. And the constant current source transistor is getting slightly warm, so that's fine. So we leave it sit for a few minutes and we just monitor the quiescent current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disappear for five minutes and then we'll come back and see if that's still around about the same voltage. In fact, I might just drop it off a little. There we go. And I'll come back and we'll see what it is. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, and a short time later, I've gone away for about five minutes. Heat sink is still relatively cold. The quiescent current has actually crept up by uh, roughly 100 millivolts or so. However, I'm going to leave that there because in the end both these modules are going to be mounted into a case with a heatsink, so it's going to be a stereo set. And I will adjust the quiescent current again for a final time after it's uh, all built. When I get around to it, I don't know when I'm going to do that. Um, there is a little bit of warmth going through these 5 watt resistors, but that's perfectly fine. Everything else appears to be um, functioning as it should. There's no magic smoke, there's no excessive heat. And I forgot to mention that we're doing all these tests with the amplifier unloaded. That is, it's not got an input signal and it does not have a load connected to the output. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and verify uh, what my output DC offset is still around about 20 millivolts so perfectly fine so it's now safe to assume that we can hook this amplifier up to a dummy load the oscilloscope and signal source that's the next step turn that off that's the next step uh, and you should really follow these steps in this order um, just so you're not damaging things uh, it's also safe to assume that we can take the amplifier off the dim bulb as well. For now I'm going to leave it on the dim bulb. We can get rid of these safety resistors that are just off screen here and put normal fuses in. Right, with uh, the fuses put in which I just robbed off the other module, we'll just do a quick power on test. 
nothing unusual it's still sitting at uh, 20 odd millivolt on the output so next is dummy load and oscilloscope time and all right as messy as that all is it is hooked up now this has a floating earth on it uh, with a 10 ohm resistor here so i haven't connected the ground of the scopes um, generator output to ground here because it'll just effectively short that resistor out and it's pointless so i've actually grounded it at the ground point even though technically because the ground of the scope shares a common ground with the test lead the ground's not really necessary but it's there anyway so it's still hooked up to the dim bulb so i now turn it on and right now i don't see anything and if you're going to connect up probes to your oscilloscope make sure it's in times 10 and I've got absolutely no signal. Well, that's disappointing. And I don't know why. Hmm. I would have thought that would have worked. Oh, there it goes. Uh, let's see. It's not triggering correctly for whatever reason. Right, with the scope now properly triggered, uh, we can see that the output is fairly clean. However, it's going to limit because of the dim bulb, so I'm going to take it off the dim bulb now. And we'll continue further testing, which is the final stage of testing a power amplifier, is its power output. Um, just checking the heat sinks, not getting hot. Okay, good. So those output transistors I bought off of Evil Bay work perfectly fine. So now, there's no power switch on this. plug it in directly and we still have an output so I'll reduce my scale and increase the input because I want to find clipping there it is there and I'm in times one I believe yeah times one so that's 68 volt peak to peak so I'll turn that down which is 72 watts RMS so it's performing exactly the same as the other module is so that is perfectly fine so there we have it that's another working power amplifier module so now I'll conclude this video with a quick sound test and um, that's it that's how you go through and test a unknown power amplifier to make sure that it's functioning and not going to blow shit up so let me hook up a speaker and an audio source and yeah we'll have a listen okay the speaker is hooked up so i'll plug it in i think nothing makes a strange noise it was a little bit there's no hum that i can hear coming out the speaker which is good all right play the track maybe Perfect. Right, so we don't need to hear the rest of that track. Um, yeah, so this amplifier module is working perfectly 
fine and those transistors I got off of Evil Bay seem to be genuine enough. So I'm pretty happy about that, so I'm going to unplug it now, this doesn't need to be plugged in anymore. And I'm going to conclude this video here. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as I said uh, during the video, this is going to be the last video for the Easter period um, until like next week sometime, or maybe the week after. I'm going to take a well-deserved break from everything, um, including YouTube videos, and focus on doing other things and, you know, basically my mental health, I guess. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. I'm Samuel Jones. This has been Astro's Electronics Lab.